Well, praise the Lord, this is the online new members class for Faith and Victory Church. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and I would like to welcome you to our members class and also just congratulate you for making the decision to become a member of Faith and Victory Church. We welcome you here. This is a family church. We are all about family, and that's why uh, we wanted to take a little time to share this information with you on becoming a new member and what it means. The Word of God is very clear. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul told the Corinthian church, I beseech you, brethren. Now, beseech is one of those King James words, but it basically means to beg. He says, I beg you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, so you can see how serious he was about this, that you all in that local church speak the same thing. I want you to think about that, speaking the same thing. As a matter of fact, there's a Greek word, homologio. Now, that's a Greek word. It doesn't mean a lot to us, you know, English speakers. But homo is same, logio means word. So we're to speak the same words. We're to actually speak the same thing, which is what Paul is encouraging the Corinthian church here to do. Speak the same thing, that there may be no divisions among you. Now think about that. We don't want division. As I said, we're a family. We want to be in agreement. We want to come together and say the same thing so that there won't be any division among us. He goes on to say that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Now that is real consistency of our words, our confession, and our belief. We need to have the same mind, the same attitude, the same thinking on things. Now Faith and Victory Church, as you know, is an independent, not affiliated with the denomination, church, non-denominational, but we are affiliated with Rama Bible Training Center. Pastor Ed is an alumni of Rama Bible Training Ch uh, Center, or Rama Bible College as it's now known. And because of that, our roots go to Rama, to Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan, and to the ministry of the Word of Faith that he preached, and that Rama still preaches. So we want to come together around that Word of Faith message. Now, what is the message of the Word of Faith? Romans chapter 10, verse 8 is very clear. What saith it? The Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the Word of Faith which we preach. Now, that phrase, Word of Faith, you know, is a little blind to us to a degree. But let's break it down. Word... We've already talked about speaking the same thing. Words, the word of faith. The Greek word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, is the transliteration. So we're to be speaking the word of faith. We're to be agreeing together around the word of faith. Paul said he preached the word of faith. Well, you know, if it's good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. There's an old joke, you know. About And I actually knew somebody like this back in the early days when I was a Southern Baptist and a young uh, teenager in the church. There was an old gentleman there, Brother Ross Henderson, blessed, precious man of God. But he was a country boy, and he said one time to me, the King James Bible's good enough for the Apostle Paul, it's good enough for me. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that think that way. Well, of course, the Apostle Paul didn't have the King James Version. The King James Version wasn't commissioned uh, by King James in England until the 1600s, and it didn't come out until 1611. So, of course, the Apostle Paul didn't use the King James. Praise the Lord. Bless his heart. I still think, Brother Ross, he still believed the Word of God. I tell you, he was a man of faith and a man of the Word of God even back then in the Baptist Church. But it isn't so much that the King James itself is good enough for the Apostle Paul, but I tell you what, the word of faith was good enough for the Apostle Paul. Amen? And so it's good enough for us. Amen. 
So let's keep going here. He says, the word of faith which we preach, that, and then he goes on to say what the word of faith is, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, there's those words again, the Lord Jesus, or Jesus as your personal Lord, and shalt believe with thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now this, is, this word saved is the Greek word sozo. Okay, it is transliterated S-O-Z-O. As a matter of fact, Pastor Ed has that as his uh, license plate on his van, sozo. <laughs> so that is an important word. It's a key word. This word sozo means to be saved, delivered, healed, protected, and made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, and delivered from all temporal evil. Wow, that's a big word. It's full of meaning. You see that? And that word that is so full of meaning is the word of faith. That's what we believe, that we confess Jesus as our Lord. And that doesn't mean just saying Jesus is Lord. It means committing yourself to the fact that he is the Lord of your life. He calls the shots. He's the one that determines what we believe. You know, I like what I heard Pastor Keith Moore say many years ago, and it's really stuck with me. Uh, he is another Rama graduate, by the way, and uh, taught the healing school at Rama Bible Training Center in his day. And Pastor Keith said one time that somebody told him, well, you know, I have a right to my beliefs. And Pastor Keith said, no, you don't have a right to your own personal beliefs. Jesus is your Lord. His beliefs, <laughs> his way of thinking, remember, have the same mind. We have the mind of Christ. We're to think the way he thinks. We're to believe the way he has for us to believe. We're to say the same thing. Have the same mind and the same judgment, as we've said. So what does that really mean? That means we receive him as Lord. He's in charge. He makes the decisions. Amen? And then it goes on to say, believe that God raised him from the dead. Now, this is raised from the dead literally, physically. Jesus, you know, didn't die and then they created a religion around him. No, he raised up physically from the dead. And we believe that. You believe in the miraculous, Dr. Bill? Absolutely. And you'll find that here at Faith and Victory Church, we believe for the miraculous all the time. I was raised up off of a deathbed. I had a week to live in the hospital. They'd given me a week to live. But here I am. My wife, same thing. In childbirth, she had postpartum cardiomyopathy right after our son was born. And they said that she needed a heart transplant. And yet, Pastor and Pastor Janie came together. We agreed in prayer. And guess what? She's healed and whole and well today. We believe in miracles. What does Faith and Victory Church believe? <laughs> we believe in miracles. We believe in the miraculous. We believe that Jesus was literally raised from the dead. Not figuratively, not in the spirit, or anything like that. No, literally raised from the dead. And that is part of the requirements for being born again. So as a new member of Faith and Victory Church, you need to confess Jesus as your Lord, and I trust you have, and you need to believe that God has raised him from the dead, and I trust you believe that. Therefore, you are saved, delivered, healed physically, made whole Spirit, soul, body, financially, and socially, that means your finances should be part of redemption, just as healing is, just as salvation is. Your needs should be met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, there are qualifications for that. You'll find that the Bible is full of places where promises are made if the conditions are met. Okay? Need to write that down. When promises are made, there are conditions. And if the conditions are met, 
then the promises are fully yours in your natural life. Amen. And you need to believe for that and receive that. One of the things that are that is required is to believe to receive. You remember how Jesus in his earthly ministry, everywhere he went when he ministered to someone, he would say, be it unto you as you believe or as your faith is, it will be unto you. Well, that means that even in his earthly ministry, the things that he did required faith on the part of the people who received it. And you need faith on your part to receive. Amen? Now, let's cover a few things. This has kind of been an introduction. Let's cover a few very specific things that I want you to see to believe as a new member of Faith and Victory Church. One thing is, this church is going places and doing things. Hallelujah. You'll find that Faith and Victory Church is an active church. It is a church where we encourage people to get involved, to become an active, vibrant part of this church. There are things you can do. If you're physically present at Faith and Victory Church, you can help in the helps ministry. Helps ministry means... We're helping our pastor do things within the church that takes pressure off of him. Okay? So, ushering, uh, being uh, a counselor, being someone that teaches a class, potentially, or any of these other areas of, of helps ministry in the church, all of that is potentially available for you to get involved in. But beyond that, you can get involved in your giving. Now, we have many ways to give here at Faith and Victory Church. I'll put up on the screen here. We have Square Cash, which is available as an app that you download from your iPhone uh, store, the Apple store, or from your Android Google Play store. It's called the Square Cash app, or just, you know, specifically the Cash app. You would look for that, and then when it came time to contribute in some way, you would send it to Dollar Faith Victory Church. That keyword or phrase is the key that you would put into the Cash App or the, uh, the destination for it to be sent to, and you would be able to give electronically. Another method is through donations at fbc.org, which is an email address that is our PayPal account. So you can give through PayPal. PayPal allows you to use credit cards and so forth, and so you can do that. And then, of course, you can mail your contributions in as well, or if you're in the service, you can contribute there during the service. Now, why do I mention all of this? Because all of these methods of giving is another way that you can be part of the church and the mission of the church. Now, let's talk a little bit about the mission of the church. We've already talked about the fact that we are a church that is a family church. We are a church that teaches the uncompromising word of faith. We are a rhema-affiliated church. All right, all of those things are true. But another way that you can participate and be involved is to contribute to the mission of the church. And our mission is extensive. We've got a lot going on. We're believing right now for a permanent building that we can get into. And you can go to fvc.org, our website, slash building, and find out more about that, for instance. But even once we get into a, a permanent building, we're, we're continuing to do other things. Local outreach. Local outreach to the community involve things like we've had uh, rallies. We've had concerts. We've had all kinds of outreach activities in our local communities. Okay, that's one thing. And then one very large area is Pastor Ed travels the world preaching the word of faith, preaching the gospel. And he's gone to Estonia. He's gone to Thailand. He's gone to many other countries. We, as Faith and Victory Church, send him and support him in that effort. So you'll hear a lot of discussion sometimes about Pastor Ed getting on the road and preaching the word, and that's part of his vision and part of the vision of Faith and Victory Church. And that is important. We need to be praying and believing for the finances to be able to send him 
to all the Bible schools that he's taught at, all of the places around the world that he's ministered. That's important. That's part of our vision. And, and I want to mention that right up front because there are a lot of churches that would say, well, why should we share our pastor with people around the world? I mean, shouldn't that be missionaries? Shouldn't that be evangelists? Well, it's part of the vision of Faith and Victory Church. It's part of the vision of what God's called us to do. And pastor has a call on his life to do that very thing. And so we get behind him. We speak the same thing. We support him in that effort. So I wanted to mention that as well. Now, let's talk about our website. As a matter of fact, if you'd like to go with me to the website, it is fvc.org. Very simple, very rare uh, to be able to have an address that is that short. If you notice on the web, there aren't too many addresses that are that short. But ours is fvc for Faith and Victory Church dot org because we're a nonprofit organization. What I want you to see is if you go to that church website and you go to the first link there at the top of the page is about. If you scroll down, you'll see our beliefs. And if you click on that, then it will bring up a brief explanation of exactly what we believe. And this is what I wanted you to see. Let's go over these basic beliefs that we all, as members of Faith and Victory Church, ascribe to, all right? The Bible is the inspired Word of God. The Bible is, not the Koran, not a newspaper, not books. <laughs> no, the Bible is the inspired Word of God, okay? Inspired is a word that means it came right out of God's own mouth. He spoke His Word, and it was written down by holy men of old. Okay, so the Bible is the inspired Word of God. Second one, our God is one, but manifested in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the doctrine of the Trinity. We believe that God is expressed and manifested as the Father, the Father God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who is an individual. The Holy Spirit is not some strange, ooey-gooey force holding the universe together like in Star Wars. No, the Holy Spirit is a he, okay? He is an individual, all right? Let's keep going. Man is a created being made in the likeness and image of God, but through Adam's transgression and fall, sin came into the world. Because of Adam's sin, sin entered into the world. When that happened... Unfortunately, the place that Adam had, because he was originally given dominion, dominion is a kingly term, he was given control or authority or dominion over the earth, that was passed to Satan, unfortunately. That's where all the sin, the sickness, the disease, all the evil has come from in this world, is because of that event. Now, would that it would not have happened, but it did, of course. The great thing is God had a plan even back then that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. Now, the seed of the woman is talking about the virgin birth, Jesus being born of a virgin and Jesus coming, and through his ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection, we're born again. Amen? I tell you, there is a lot of study in that, and I'd encourage you to study all of that out because it's very, very important. All right, let's keep going. Salvation is the gift of God to man through faith in Jesus Christ. And let me say this. Jesus said himself, I am the way, and he is the only way to the Father. Now, a lot of people would say that's very closed-minded, that only Jesus is the way to the Father. He said it. <laughs> He's the one that said that. And that's why we follow him. And that's why salvation is available only through Jesus. Amen? Not through any other religion. There are various denominations and people that say, oh, whatever you believe is okay. No, whatever you believe is not okay. Remember what I was talking about earlier. 
It's not whatever you want to believe. It's what Jesus said to believe. Amen? Our choice is to follow the word of God. Praise the Lord. And that is clear. All right. The new birth is necessary to all men, and when experience produces eternal life. Whoo, hallelujah. That's shouting ground right there. Eternal life in the Greek is the Greek word zoe. Z-O-E is the way it's transliterated. And it means eternal life. Life without end. Life as God has it. Wow, that's exciting. And we have access to and are made part of God's eternal life because of receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord. Whoo, amen. Let's keep reading. Baptism in water is by immersion. It is a direct commandment of our Lord, and it is for believers only. All right? It is a, uh, an, an example of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and we are water baptized in obedience to the Scripture. All right? Let's keep going. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a gift and is accompanied by the initial evidence of of speaking in other tongues. Now, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a second experience with the Lord. You get born again, that's one experience. But then there's a second experience, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the initial evidence of that is speaking in other tongues. And that is an empowering. That is tremendous. I was born again in 1969, April of 1969. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost on November the 10th, 1973. Two separate dates, two separate times. And the time between 1969 and 1973, I was doing the best I can to get by. You know what I'm saying? But boy, from 1973 on, the power of God came on me. And I tell you, it changed my life even more than I'd already been changing. That was great but even more so because now the power of the Spirit of God was in my life, and I was able to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave me utterance. And that speaking in tongues is a tremendous blessing because it gives you rest. It gives you peace. It builds you up on your most holy faith. Now, it doesn't build your faith. It builds you up on your most holy faith. That's Jude verse 20, all right? And as I say some of these things, I'll try to give you some of the references so that you can go study them out. All right, Acts 2, 4 talks about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 lists the spiritual gifts uh, that are available through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 14 talks about the use of tongues in the church. That's a whole in de- you know detailed study that we could get into but I encourage you to go in and check that out. And if you've not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then I encourage you to receive that second experience with the Lord. All right, let's keep going. We believe in sanctification, which is living a life of holiness. Now, we're to live a life that is pleasing to God. We don't live a life that's pleasing to God in order to get saved. We're saved through the Lord Jesus Christ, and through our faith in Him. But once we're saved, once we're born again, then we want to live a life that is pleasing to God. Amen? And in order to do that, we can live in the grace of God, which is an empowering for service. A lot of people look at grace and say, oh, uh, we live under grace, and so we can live any way we want to. We can sin, we can do whatever. No, that's not what grace is about. As a matter of fact, Paul himself said in his writings, should we continue in sin that grace shall much more abound? God forbid. That was not his intent. But grace is there to empower us for service. The Holy Ghost is there to empower us for service and for living a life that is holy before the Lord. Now, here's the thing. Everybody can miss it. Everybody can attempt to live a holy life and fall. But you know what? 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says that if we sin, then we can pray 
and God will cleanse us from all sin, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and keep on going with God. I like what I heard Brother Kenneth Copeland say. He said, when you do sin, don't run from God. Run to him. God's there to cleanse you from sin if you miss it. But the goal is to live that holy life before the Lord, to please him. God is pleased when we live according to his word. Amen. Let's keep going. Uh, we believe in sanctification, sanctification, which is living a life of holiness. Healing is the privilege of every member of the church today provided through Jesus' death on the cross. Healing, physical healing, is part of redemption. It is part of what Jesus has provided for us. I mentioned the fact that I've been healed supernaturally. My wife's been healed supernaturally. Pastor Ed was healed fairly recently, within the last few years. He was going to lose his toe, and yet God healed him supernaturally. Pastor Janie healed supernaturally. They're just testimony after testimony after testimony of people at Faith and Victory Church that have been healed. Pastor Ed can uh, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We all can as believers. Amen. Mark chapter 16 says that as we go out into the world, we're to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But then there are also special anointings that God gives. You can read about that over in the book of Acts, uh, where uh, the Apostle Paul was talking about the fact that God had given him a special ministry, such that when he laid his hands on claws and napkins, cloth, those claws were taken and laid on folks, and they were healed and the devils were cast out. Well, in the same way, Pastor Ed has many times laid hands on claws, worn them on his person while he's ministering, and then given them to people, and there have been miraculous healings that have taken place through that. There are so many ways you can be healed. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, gifts of healings, it's plural, gifts of healings, manifestations, many manifestations of healings are available and ways to be healed. Again, another long study, but I encourage you to check it out. Let's keep going. Jesus will return and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that day when we leave here and head on up yonder. As the old song says, I'll fly away. <laughs> Amen. Well, we can look forward to that day. It's coming. The rapture of the church is an event that will be coming. It's the next event on the calendar of prophecy. Amen. There's no more remaining prophecy that is left to be fulfilled before the rapture of the church. We're right on the edge of that. We're getting close. Amen. Amen. And that means we're out of here. Just as Noah and those of, that were with him, his family, the eight people there, were lifted up on the boat out of the judgment that came on the world, same thing for us. We are lifted up out of the judgment that is coming upon the world through the tribulation and the days that the book of Revelation talks about. We are getting out of here. Amen. And so I'm looking forward to that. Jesus will return, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds in the rapture. Amen. A whole study of second coming teaching. Again, you could really get into that. You can study it out in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Just all over the word. Amen. All right. Next, uh, the last one here, the one who physically dies in his sins without accepting Christ is eternally lost and therefore has no further opportunity of hearing the gospel or repenting. Now, that's, that's sobering. And that's one reason we're still here on the earth is to get people born again. That's why I talk about sending pastor out across the world to get people born again. Because they need to hear the gospel, they need to receive the gospel, and they need to confess with their mouth Jesus is Lord, believe that God has raised him from the dead, and they'll be saved. Amen? Now, all of this is available, but let me give you another link here on our website. Underneath this list of our basic beliefs 
It says, want more information? You can view our expanded beliefs by clicking the link, and it will take you to that. Now, that is a long list of very specific teaching with all the scripture. Now, here's what I want you to do as part of your homework for this new uh, members class for Faith and Victory Church. Take this list as your homework and look up these scriptures. Study out all of these expanded or extended beliefs because this goes into detail of all the things that we've covered briefly today. I know it's been brief uh, to get into everything that Faith and Victory Church believes. Well, guess what? It's all listed here for you to go over and have the scriptures. It'd be one thing to say, this is what we believe, but not give you the word to back it up. Remember, the Bible is our uh, final authority of what we believe. Not just what some man thought up, but what does the Bible say? You'll hear that again and again and again. Again, I go back to something I heard Pastor Keith Moore say in his teaching one time. He said, how do you know something is scriptural? When there's scripture, <laughs> we don't believe something just because, well, this is the way it's always been taught. No, we believe it because of the scripture. What does it take to be scriptural? Scripture. <laughs> so that's why we have the expanded beliefs here with lots of scriptural references for you to look up and to study out. Now, again, this is your homework. Come on, folks. Take this seriously. Do your homework. You'll find that if you do your homework, your studies will go a lot easier. <laughs> and that's what we want you to do here, is study these scriptures out. And, uh, you know, there will be a test. It just won't be a written test that you have to pass. The test are the tests that come, potential trials that may come, that you will overcome through your knowledge of the Word of God. We are world overcomers through Jesus Christ. Faith and Victory Church believes the very best for you and your family. You're blessed and everything you put your hand to shall prosper, and we believe that for you and with you. If you have any questions, you could write me at Word uh, at uh, Faith and Victory Church, and uh, I encourage you to use this email address, drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at fbc.org. Okay? Let me give you that to you again. D-R-B-I-L-L, at fvc.org. Another email address that's important is office at fvc.org. That is our general email address. Somebody monitors that email box all the time. If you have any questions or any anything about the church that you'd like to know, you can send it to office at fvc.org. But if you'd like to ask me specifically a question, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L at fvc.org. I trust you've enjoyed this class, this teaching that we've done. I know it's been kind of at a 10,000-foot level, but that's what we've needed is to establish that basic understanding of who we are, what we believe, and where our belief comes from, which is the Word of God. So, remember until the next time I speak with you to fulfill the Word of God.